This is Notes for Engineers episode number two. I'm Alistair Cook and today we're doing a tutorial around the basics of how snapshots work. We will just look at the very basics because the, even that will take us uh, the 10 or 15 minutes that I want these videos to be. We will do quite a few more notes on snapshots because snapshots are an important area and there is quite a lot to know about snapshots. Right now we're just going to cover the basics. So the first basic is that snapshots are applied to a whole virtual machine. In the vSphere client or the web client, we select a virtual machine and we select a new snapshot and give it a name. It affects the whole virtual machine, all of the disks for the virtual machine. And we're doing it at the virtualization layer, and as a consequence, everything inside the virtual machine is unaware of this. So the operating system continues to operate, the applications inside the virtual machine continue to operate. They have no awareness whatsoever that under the covers, we've actually frozen a moment in time for that virtual machine and we can return to that moment in time if we want to. Okay. That's fundamentally what the snapshots are about, let the virtual machine continue to operate but give us a frozen moment in time within the virtual machine. Things that we hold in that frozen moment in time, CPU and memory state of the virtual machine. We'll see that that gets thrown into one file. And then we freeze the hard drives, the hard drives for the virtual machine, the files that were previously the hard drives, they don't change again whilst the snapshot's in place, and disk changes are redirected into a new set of files. For production virtual machines, the primary thing that we use snapshots for is to enable backups. And I'll talk about just how we enable backups with, with snapshots, but for production VMs, it's the primary use for them. One of the, the other concepts I want you to have in your head as you're working with snapshots is that snapshots are an awesome tool, just like a chainsaw is an awesome tool. But if you misuse a chainsaw, you can easily cut your leg off. Snapshots aren't that dangerous, but if you don't understand them and you misuse them, they can cause you an awful lot of pain. So before we look at a snapshot of a virtual machine, here's my VM here running a normal operation. Hard drives for virtual machines on, on VMware are made up of two different files. So what the virtual machine thinks is its hard drive is actually two files sitting on a data store. There's a very small file, and this particular virtual machine is called MyVM, and so its first hard drive is called myvm.vmdk, and that file is only a few hundred bytes in size, and it's used to tell the uh, ESX server where to find the, the, the actual data that makes up this virtual machine. Uh, hard drive. So the hard drive itself, the binary data, the actual files and blocks and everything that is what the virtual machine is storing in its hard drive lives inside that flat file. So my vm underscore, uh, my underscore vm dash flat dot vmdk is where all the hard drive data is. Uh, this is the relatively large file. So maybe if the virtual machine's got a 60 gigabyte C drive, the my vm dash flat file might well be 60 gigabytes in size. And whilst the my VM VMDK is just a little tiny one. But the two together are what makes the hard drive for the virtual machine. Virtual machine in normal operation opens that flat file for reads and writes. It reads data directly from it, it writes data directly to it. This is the way normal operation works. It's just like there was a hard drive there, as far as the VM is concerned, there is. One day we decide it's time to take a snapshot of the virtual machine. And now this snapshot happens awfully fast, but I've broken it up into a couple of stages. So the first one is actually presenting that frozen state and the things that make up the frozen state. One of the things that happens is that the virtual machine closes the flat file. It's no longer going to make changes because we have to freeze the state of the flat file. From here on in, as long as the snapshot, called snapshot1, is in place, that flat file will not change. It will only ever be read by things as long as the snapshot's in place. The second thing that makes up that moment in time for the virtual machine is its memory and CPU state. And that's this new file you can see on the right, myvm.0s1.vmss. That combination of that frozen flat file and that VMSS file between them represent the state of the virtual machine at that moment when we snapshotted it. So those together are the things that make that state. Of course, the operating system is going to continue to operate, so we need somewhere to redirect the changes. And that's this green pair of files. And again, there's a VMDK file that is small and describes where the actual data is, and then there's a larger data file. Now, this isn't a flat file, it's instead a delta file. And delta, of course, means change. And this is where all of the blocks that the virtual machine has written to and changed since the moment of the snapshot is stored. 
So the virtual machine's disk writes now are redirected into that delta file. Of course, that means that we have to look for blocks when there's a read, we have to look in the delta file first. If the blocks change since the snapshot, we'll find it in the delta file and we'll return to the virtual machine that updated contents that's in the delta file. If the block hasn't changed, the, the seek in the delta file will be a miss. This, that block doesn't exist here. Consequently, we know that it hasn't changed since the snapshot. We can look for that block back in the flat file because it hasn't changed. It's still there in that, that original state. So the delta uh, file contains every block that the virtual machine has written to since the snapshot moment. And here I'm going to drop out all the file names and just have some block numbers. And so you can see that the flat file contains lots and lots of blocks. All of the blocks that, that contain data at the moment we took our snapshot. And then the green delta file contains only the blocks the VM has written changes to. Now it doesn't store a list of all of the changes that were made, it stores the up-to-date contents of each block. So you can see that blocks 17 and 85 are both in the delta file. They've been changed by the virtual machine since the snapshot. Now it could be that the virtual machine is repeatedly writing to block 17. Maybe it's a log file and new log entries are being appended to the end of the file. They all live within block 17. We only store one copy of block 17 in that delta file and it's the most up-to-date copy. Okay, so the delta file can't grow beyond the size of the hard drive that it's a snapshot of. So if that flat file represented a 60 gigabyte hard drive, the delta file should stay no, smaller than 60 gigabytes. Now that's one of the big dangers with snapshot files, is those delta files do grow. As long as the snapshot is in place, the delta file will continue to grow over time and it will grow quite unevenly, depending upon what the virtual machine is doing. The more things the virtual machine writes to disk, the larger the delta file grows. And um, we see this when you first snapshot the virtual machine, there's a fast growth at the start, and then it slows down a little bit, and it depends a lot. It can be unpredictable. Uh, this growth of the delta file is what causes us to run out of space on the underlying data store most often. Usually, if you run out of space on a data store, because you've got a snapshot in place on a virtual machine, the delta file has chewed up all of the free space. That's a really bad thing. You don't want that to happen. And that's the primary reason why we like to get rid of snapshots after they've been around for a while. We want to delete those snapshots. Now, the main reason we have these snapshots on production virtual machines is to enable the virtualization aware backup. Uh, VMware backup involves copying those flat files out. Now, before the snapshot was in place, the virtual machine had the flat file open for reads and writes. And that meant that nothing else could open the file for reads or writes. Once the snapshot was in place, the flat file is opened read only. Files can be opened read only by multiple things because nobody's changing the file, there's no possibility of, of corrupting data. Uh, and so the backup application will simply open the file for reads. It'll copy that flat file out whilst the virtual machine is in normal operation. This is how the virtualization aware backups work. They snapshot the virtual machine, copy out the flat file, and then they delete the snapshot afterwards. That last stage of deleting the snapshot is really important. So virtualization aware backup, snap VM, copy flat file, delete snapshot, move on. The function of the delete snapshot. What we need to do when we get rid of the snapshot, we no longer need to hold that moment in time, I say it's usually because the backup's finished, is that we have to take all of the blocks that have changed since the snapshot, write them over the now out of date contents in that, that flat file, and then we can get rid of the delta file and the, the VMSS file. So that's what we've got here, blocks 17 and 85 that are in the, the delta file. Their data is being overwritten on top of the data that was in the, the flat file. Once that's complete, we can actually throw away the delta file. We don't need it because all of the blocks are now available in the flat file. And of course, then we can lose the VMSS file. and We return to normal operation with an updated copy of that flat file. All the changes the VM made while it was snapshotted are now in the flat file. And we can continue operation. Of course, our backup software's probably moved on to the next virtual machine. Those are the, that's the fundamentals of how a VMware snapshot works. It's, it's not a particularly complicated process. Um, it gets more complicated as we add more pieces. Important things to know, we're snapshotting a whole virtual machine. Once the VM is snapshotted, the delta file will grow, and they can grow to be very large. It takes a while. 
might require the virtual machine to be doing something silly, but they can grow over time and they have something to be very watchful for. Other things to understand about a snapshot is that they're not there for restoring parts of a virtual machine. When we've got a snapshot in place, it's an enabler of a backup. It's not actually a backup itself. You can't extract from that snapshot two or three files that are, need to be injected back into the virtual machine. Right? You need to have used a backup application that will enable that to happen. In later uh, notes for engineers, I'm going to look at chaining of snapshots. So the fact that you've got a snapshot on a virtual machine uh, after one change, you maybe snapshot again and make another change and snapshot again and make another change. And so you don't do this on a production virtual machine, but on a test virtual machine, it can be really useful to have a series of snapshots. And I'll look at that later on. I'll also look at some of the, the more detail about how snapshots work and particularly how that deleter snapshots works. And then we'll look at some of the risks and dangers around snapshots and how to think about snapshotted virtual machines. This has been episode number two of Notes for Engineers, uh, and it's the fundamentals of how snapshots work. Keep going back to notesforengineers.com and keep an eye out for later tips where I will talk some more about how snapshots fit together and the dangers when you use them. Have fun.